Okay, next thing we're going to be looking at is uh, lesson one of the core curriculum for level one regimental Highland broadsword. And uh, Andy here has not done this lesson before and is actually going to be learning it right here. So, start off with, he's going to be the antagonist, the bad guy in the lesson, and I'm going to be the protagonist, and then we're going to switch. So take a hanging guard, and just cut at my leg. It's a shift and counter. He cuts at the leg, I shift and counter to his head in the same unit of time. What does that mean in the same unit of time? Well, fencing time is defined by the amount of movements that you make with your sword. So for him to cut my leg takes one unit of fencing time. If I was to parry that leg attack, it's also a unit of fencing time. And if I was to repost and try to hit him in the head afterwards, it takes a second unit of fencing time and he can also parry it. But for me to shift and simultaneously counter takes the same amount of fencing time as his cut to my leg, one unit of time. Therefore, since for him to get away would take two units, one to cut me, one to parry, and I am only using one unit, which is the shift and counter, I have a time advantage and there's basically no way he can escape unless he's twice as fast as me. Take the hanging guard, he goes for the leg cut, I shift and cut him in the head. Now if you're doing this with a training partner, I don't want you to do it with the kind of speed and power that I just did where you can actually hear the weapon whistle until you're a lot more experienced. You'd want to do it with a little more uh, care like that so that you don't accidentally crack his skull open. But once you build up some experience, it is possible to do this with a fair bit of speed. So now we're going to switch. I'm going to be the antagonist and he's going to be the protagonist. I'm going to cut his leg from the hanging guard. He's going to shift back and counter either to my head or arm although the head is more typical. Comes straight down on the head. If you happen to hit the arm, that's fine. Okay, now your hanging guard is a little lower than it ought to be. You want to get it as high as you can. Because if you have it down low here, I'm going to snipe at it from underneath. So get it right up there. And the other thing you want is that the midway point on the blade, your half sword, should come right at the point of your own center line or line of balance. That way you're well guarded in every direction. Straighten your front foot out so it's pointing straight forward. Now when I cut for the leg, you shift and counter to the head. And that is lesson one. So now we are looking at lesson two of the core curriculum for level one, Regimental Highland Broadsword. Lesson two begins on an outside guard and the antagonist goes to cut the leg. The protagonist shifts and counters. So, Andy's the antagonist, he goes to cut my leg. I shift and I counter and the uh, obvious target for that counter is to come right down on his wrist. Now I'm going to be the antagonist, he's going to be the protagonist. I go for the leg cut, he shifts and counters, and will land most likely on my arm, although if he happens to hit my head, that's fine. So you don't want to make this cut any more complicated than you have to, it's just... And this has the same advantage in fencing time as the uh, lesson one. I go to cut his leg, that takes one unit of time. To parry his attack would take a second unit of time, which I don't have, because his shifting counter also only takes one unit of fencing time. And that's lesson two. Now, lesson three of the core curriculum for level one regimental Highland Broadsword introduces the feint. But because we're only showing one feint, does not mean you're only limited to that feint. It's really just an example for you to understand the concept. So we both take an inside guard, and the protagonist is going
going to feint two and cut three. So you're going to just respond to Perry cut two, and then let me make cut three for purposes of what. So when I'm doing the feint, I don't move my foot because I'm not moving in distance for the real attack until it is a real attack. I wouldn't want to be making a fake attack and step forward and have him hit me in the arm. Timing into a feint attack is actually a very common way to land a touch in a broadsword battle. So when I make the feint, I don't move my foot at all, but when I make the real cut, I lunge it in. That's also how you can tell whether something is a feint or not. If he hasn't moved his foot, and you're not in close distance, then it is a feint because he can't reach you. If he is moving his foot, that means he's moving into distance to hit you, and therefore it's not a feint. So let's take a look at this one again. This is feint two, cut three. All right, now he's gonna be the protagonist, I'm gonna be the antagonist. That cut should come from underneath, and cut the uh, sword arm or wrist. Remember not to step forward at all during the thing. So watch this, when I'm doing the thing, you really gotta sell it, because the thing is a lie. You're trying to make him think you're doing something you're not really doing. So the thing itself should really shouldn't be subtle. It has to be, right? So now you need to respond to the feint, because otherwise, yeah, if you don't respond to the feint, it's gonna turn into a real cut. And again, this feint is just an example. There's tons of other feints you can use. My personal favorite feint comes from McBain. It comes off the same guard. This is not uh, to be used for lesson three. This is just an example of the variety of feints that are out there. I make the same feint to the outside high, and watch what happens. That's a feint to thrust to the inside. That's a brilliant feint because it doesn't change the line. He goes to make his parry and I just pull my hand in a little and it causes me to skip right past his blade and then my point's in his face. We didn't include that as the lesson because it's not very safe to practice as a beginning technique. It's more of an advanced technique. But I just want you to understand that this feint that we're showing here, feint two cut three, it's a typical example but it is only an example, and you can do anything you can think of. That's it for lesson three.